Hey guys, it's Will's Video Edits here. Uh, today, I'm just going to do a little tutorial on VMware Workstation 7. Uh, I don't know about the other versions, but I'm just familiar with 7. I don't think it changed that much. But uh, I'm just going to do a 101 on that. I recently got it, and I've just been messing around with it and learned some new stuff with it. And I thought I might as well share, so here we go. So, um, I'm just going to open it up. So, I realize I've been trying to put Mac OS on mine. Um, I didn't have that much lag, actually, as I thought it would. But I'm running, uh, if you right click on computer, go to properties. It'll tell you specs. I'm running 2.8 gigahertz until Core 2 Duo. <clears throat> 4 gigs of RAM, 64 bit. I'm not, I'm putting 1.5 gigs of RAM onto my Mac partition and really not getting that much lag. And it's pretty cool just on spotlight searches. But, anyways, so here's a layout. Uh, so you actually see something more like without this crap. Alright, so this is a layout. Uh, it's pretty simple. You, if you're installing, let's say a Windows partition, you just go to like New Virtual Machine. I do custom just because I know what I'm doing, but you can do typical if you don't want to go into that much detail. Custom, so I'll just show you guys what everything means. Uh, just do compatibility with this stuff. Just the like the newest versions, unless you are tr gonna try to use it with the older versions. Let's click next. Um, n now for this part, it kind of depends. Uh, you can use Daemon Tools, which runs the disk virtually. In ISO, you can like mount it, which might have a little bit more reliability. Or you could just do um, an ISO image on your computer, which is in this case, I'm using Darwin Snow. Um, or you can use a real disk if you have the Windows 7, Windows XP, Windows 2000, whatever. You have the disk, you can just put in, pop it in there and then just start it up with that as if you're installing a normal hard drive. Or you can install it later. I'll just install it later because I don't have the disk. All right now I'm just doing, showing you guys it. All right, now here you select your operating system. It's pretty simple. Just select what you have. Um, it shows you all there. I have I'm, I tried Linux before and it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't really have any need for it. I was gonna install like Windows XP, but then I realized there's really no need for it for me because I don't have any compatibility issues that I have to deal with. But uh, anyways, so for Mac, you go to Other, and then you just go to Other 64-bit. But it mostly, if you are doing Mac installs, uh, usually it comes with you can download a package that has like tells you it always sets all the stuff up for you so you don't have to do it yourself anyways uh, for this I'm just gonna do myself Windows Windows 764 bit next you can name it Windows 7 I'm just gonna name it something simple you can change where I just keep it in documents just cuz next uh, now I have to be careful with this stuff uh, changing the processors because you never want to give it more than your computer actually has. My computer is two cores, one processor. So if I did that, it would be giving the virtual uh, computer the same amount of power as my normal computer, which is all right in a sense, but at the same time, it's kind of dangerous because it could uh, lag your operating system original one which would cause VMware to lag, which would cause your operating operating system you're running virtually to lag, which is kind of pain. But I'm just going to set it to 1. And I don't have overclocking either. Also, a uh, tip important is it's good to enable virtualization in your BIOS. I cannot do that because my laptop is like custom, so it doesn't really have any BIOS options, except you can change the time, which is pretty gay. But that's all I can do so but a lot of desktops I know my brother's desktop you can adjust the virtualization settings which allows your computer to let you 
uh, just like enable virtualization. But I have the download here. It's called Securable, and what it does is just tells you if uh, hardware virtualization works. It says yes, so just tells you that it works. That's good to know. Before you uh, download VMware, it's good to check that. Make sure your computer can actually do it. You can still try it, even if it says no, but I'm not going to guarantee anything. All right, next. RAM, you don't never want to set the RAM more than what you have. Really, with any of the settings, you never want to set it more than what you have. Uh, but you don't want to set the 4 because uh, the swapping will occur, which is, just means that... If RAM more need, RAM is needed on your virtual disk, then it'll rat some of the RAM from your original, which might cause some problems. So I just set it pretty low, depending on what I'm what programs be running on my virtual machine. So one gig's fine. And then for this, uh, it's kind of a pain because NAT is kind of direct, it uses your host's IP address, but bridge networking. I try that Mac OS, it doesn't work. I don't know what the problem is. So I'm sticking with NAT because it just directly uses the same IP address, but you can try out and see what it works. But you can change all these settings after if you want it to. I'll show you how to. Next, your IDE controller or IO controller types. Uh, I just keep it the recommended because it says recommended. I don't like to mess with this stuff because I don't have a complete understanding of what that is. But um, yeah. I just keep the recommended stuff. Next, uh, you can create a new virtual disk. You can use a physical disk. Uh, you can use existing virtual disk. Uh, I just I just create a new virtual disk because unless you have an existing operating system virtually that you want to put these settings onto, then just create a new one and then click next. Uh, S C S I. I always do that. I don't know what it means, but it's good because it's recommended. All right, and then size-wise, I'm just gonna set it for 10 now because I don't think waiting a while for it to set that up. But what this does is set the amount hard disk space the partition can take. You can change this later. Might mess with some stuff, but you can still do it. And I just store it as a single file, so you don't have annoying extra files. Also, single file makes it easier to move around your virtual machine if you want to move to another computer you can just take that single file put it in a flash drive move it over you know what I'm saying but it's cool uh, and the next and then you saying what where you want to put the 10 gigabyte disk file next and then you can just browse your settings looks pretty good if you customize your hardware you can set up your display uh, accelerate 3d graphics kind of nice I wouldn't say you can game on it some drivers you have to set up especially Mac I know you can't set up really drivers with that so this doesn't really matter but that's cool because you can game on some systems memory I already went through all this stuff uh, yeah I just keep it at the stuff it's at sound card speakers there we go alright that was finished and that was fast and I created it but um, now it, you would just turn it on as you normally turn on an operating system and it would go through the install like you normally would install, install an operating system. You can look that up if you got clues on that. This cool up here, you can change it. A uh, quick switch, switch, which makes it so you can easily just, the menus up here, you can switch out of it. This is a full screen, make it full screen. And then there's a cool thing, if you go to VMware, uh, where is it? You have to have the operating system open. What does is makes it exclusive mode, which means that you can't even tell that you're running it virtually because it doesn't bring up this panel when you go to the top, which is kind of cool. So it, you actually think it feels like you're actually running an operating system. It doesn't feel like lame. But uh, Unity, which is cool, so you can run XP programs within Windows 7. Like it doesn't have the Windows XP bar there. It's just like you can run the applications without having to run it separately the Windows XP or whatever the other operating system files uh, separately but on Windows 7 and then we have the summary view, appliance view and console view these once you start up your virtual machine I'll do that now just to show you guys uh, I'm going to try to start at Mac I don't know if it's really going to work it's kind of a pain I've been working on this for a few hours now 
but now see how they're highlighted you can go summer view it just shows all this information um, and then I go back over to crap yeah all right so just start my Mac but that's it for that and then to turn off your operating system VM this has a lot of stuff a lot of stuff is important like I'd recommend taking snapshots after you a snapshot is just like a recovery disk in a sense so if you take a snapshot it saves your hard drive state so you can cover from where that hard drive state was from just by revert to snapshot so I made a few on the Mac because it doesn't really work too well but uh, I'd definitely recommend that and then it's just for adjusting the settings it's important stuff if you need to adjust it and that's pretty much it so if you guys have any questions whatsoever feel free to contact me I'll get back to you as soon as I can and it can be any question uh, just send me maybe some ideas for tutorials and new videos I can figure out things pretty quick and Google's always your friend so I'll just, I can look up stuff and just set a tutorial how to do it uh, you can you, if you need help with programs uh, operating system game installs torrent install like torrents anything just uh, PM me and I'll get back to you thanks for watching